podcast it. But today we're coming for a variety of basements, living rooms, and craft rooms. Um, and today we'll be talking a little bit about working from home, managing teams from home, and what we're seeing in the digital marketing world as everything around it shifts dramatically. Uh, I think first we'll go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Aaron. I'm uh, Data's Chief Strategy Officer. Uh, that mostly means I do what Carrie tells me. <laughs> and I like, like numbers and computers and things too. <laughs> I'm going this way or down. Uh, I don't know, that way? Clockwise. Okay, yeah. I'll go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Carrie Petrie. I'm the director of project management at Data. Uh, so I oversee our project management team and our content specialist team. Uh, my whole goal is to make sure that we're providing uh, services uh, at a high quality for all of our clients. And I've been at Data, it'll be five years this July, if you can believe that, Luke. It's been a long, crazy ride. <laughs> I can't imagine the first three years without you. So, um, my name is Luke Reardon, CEO and founder. I've been here for eight years because uh, I founded it. Um, <laughs> so, I kind of had been, they've been stuck with me since. Um, my main role is uh, promoting the brand, supporting the team, um, making sure that uh, we have money in the bank, you know, stuff like that uh, to pay our team and support everyone, and then. Um, for, uh, ultimately uh, support our value proposition in uh, whatever it takes uh, from that level as well. So uh, great to have uh, everyone here. And we're supposed to mention what we're drinking, right? So I, yeah. I'm i not having a, the best happy hour or I'm not the best participant, but I've got a beautiful bottle of water here trying to stay healthy. Very well. <laughs> All right, and then I, I, am, I forgot to mention that. There you go, perfect. Oh, oh one. I'll do two and one. So I'm Jason, drinking surly something. <laughs> uh, advertising director at Data. So I lead our paid advertising team. So um, anything on the Facebook, Google, Instagram, Pinterest, all those good things. Um, paid advertising with the rest of the team on uh, everything from strategy, execution, making sure we're delivering the results that we want to see, hitting goals for the campaigns that we're running. Um, also do what Carrie tells <laughs> me to do as well. So um, I think that's kind of a common trend, like, probably among all of us, actually. I like that a lot. That's why she likes coming to work, because everyone knows that at work. Right. And then at home, I don't know if it's the same there, huh? It is not the same. <laughs> <laughs> So where is everyone working? Who are you working from? Who are you isolated with right now? In general, uh, I am, the room. Okay, I'm isolated. Uh, I have two little boys who are seven and eight. Um, so I'm working from home with them. Today, my youngest made an appearance uh, with a lightsaber. Uh, and the other one was standing on the table behind me building Legos because I'm in the basement, which is usually their domain, but I've taken it over for, for myself during this time period. So I'm doing the work from home and the uh, distance learning adventure teaching. So that's been really a fun. <laughs> and you left out the most important part, the Lego building and underwear. Lego yes. building and underwear. Yes, I've which I to witness. Yes. Yeah, which poor Jason is <laughs> why wear clothes. I appreciate it. Day, it you know? comfortable and fun. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens in my house. <laughs> I, I as well have two little boys, uh, eight year old and three year old. So I'm here with them, and then my wife, who's got another human being in her belly. Um, making one right now. So um, there are um, many of us here quarantined, and then you got a cat and a dog. Um, but you do, the nice part about working from home is you get like hand delivered, half eaten cookies. Oh, uh, I got one today too. Yeah, so Thoughtful. Jason, have you got one of those? No, that's what I'm missing, I guess, from not having kids. Yeah. yeah. Darn. <laughs> when, they, when they bring it to you with like, three or four you know bites in it it's all all the best so. i had to, i had to go get my own cookie earlier <laughs> it was a full one though so that was a good thing <laughs> you got the whole cookie 
Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm just here with the uh, wife and dog. So it's pretty quiet. I like it because sometimes yeah. your back door behind you will open yeah. up like a ghost is coming in, but then we know that it's Eddie the dog coming in. <laughs> yeah, under the fur, you can't quite see him creeping in. So that's a little better because I got attacked by my cat like full on during a web like a webcam <laughs> call earlier. I just got in nowhere. Ugh. Then I heard a curse and hit my cat. So hmm. when I noticed my wife just texted or commented, I should say uh that both my boys are crying right now too so of course they are thank goodness for her because she's got them right now <laughs> <laughs> now i'm home with dog and cat brother and husband so your brother well, who also works for yes, data mark works at data. you know i tried to talk him into live streaming with me but um <laughs> was, but, no <laughs> That was not cool enough. Uh, so we've all been working remotely for well over a week now. A week and two days. Yeah. Yep. What have we seen work in our teams, not working in our teams? What's I don't know. What have been some of the bigger challenges that we've overcome with this that you guys would want to share? You know, it sounds really silly, but I think the biggest challenge I've seen with my team is they just really miss each other. <laughs> I think like just that, um, you know, the the chatter in the workplace of just catching up with people and telling jokes and just some of like those lighthearted moments that it's harder to have when you're all working from home. I think people just really miss that, miss talking to somebody other than your eight year old. <laughs> I, I mean, I have been super impressed, though, that everyone has been doing a great job with communicating, um, you know, between Slack, but then also we've been doing a lot more live um, video meetings, obviously, than we have when people are in the office in the media one-on-one. But um, I thought it was cool, you know, one of our pods had or sets up kind of a daily time. It's like an hour where they just set up this as working time and the whole pod can just join you know google hangouts or zoom um mm -hmm. and then you know they can if something comes up they can still have that back and forth conversation around you know this happened with this client um kind of like if you were in the office trying to maintain that same mentality but obviously doing it virtually so i thought that's really cool and just have been super impressed with just the entire team and how everyone's been communicating across the board yeah I heard from my dad's company is that they've been doing that lunch hour zooms with the whole company where anyone can pop on, no agenda, just goofing off. I think mm. that's cool. I know our Snap game has really elevated itself during this period. <laughs> yeah. Data Snapchat is a uh, lit. Yeah. Lit, as that our friend I would say. Can you can you ask Jory? Is that the right word? Do the kids still say that? Yeah. <laughs> is there something new? Miles. <laughs> Comment if kids still say that. <laughs> yeah, my son says sick. So that says goes. what? Sick. sick. I think that's sick. a little old. That's old. But they still that still in. Old. Is it is it still in or are kids like out of the loop? Uh, he might be a little bit <laughs> too long. Okay, Miles so. confirms what's still a thing, so that's, oh. that's good. Is <laughs> our good. Snapchat lit though? That's okay. oh yeah. <laughs> I think the other part of it has just been kind of acknowledging that life's just a little crazy now. And just kind yeah, of coping with that. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing is that expectations just kind of have to change. Um, knowing that, like I've told my team, if you know, if you have to go parent for an hour, just mark it on your calendar and it's fine. And um, you know, I think over communication is sort of the the line that we've all been taking and what people have been doing and um, understanding that if you're usually really on top of emails and right now maybe it takes you a little bit longer to respond, like everybody understands that. And I think the cool thing is that from our client perspective, all of our clients are, are dealing with the exact same thing and they get it too. I was um, emailing with a client and she's like, yeah, I got my kid practicing her saxophone in the next room and oh. she was Oh. <laughs> see and oh. that happened 
We got an you intern. Know. Good timing. <laughs> there he is. Are you leaving? Okay. You just want to say hi. Let me give you another cookie. Quick appearance. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, uh, but yeah, I just think that that it's just an understanding that expectations are a little bit different now. We're all kind of in this together. Point. And sometimes it's hard because the CEO could be like really judgmental or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. You never see me get interrupted. I'm always focused. Yeah. Well, Luke, you've always been a fan of the distributed work from home when you need to. Can you talk a little bit about why that's been Data's philosophy from kind of the get go? Well, I mean, I would have never expected it helped us tremendously prepare for moments like this. Um, that would be lying if I said that's what we were gearing up for. Um, but we've used this work from home in a couple different cases, too. So it's been really slick, like when we were supposed to be in our office and, you know, didn't work out as far as timing goes and we were homeless for about a two and a half week period. Um, we also work from home too. So, um, you know, I think I think it's helped us in many ways. It's also uh, helped out a lot in cases where we live in Minnesota, most of us. Um, and when you get a big snowstorm and you still need to work, but it just doesn't, it's just not safe to drive in as well. Or the commute goes from taking maybe 30 minutes or 45 minutes to two hours. Um, that's no fun. And so to be able to work from home, um, we find it's way more efficient. Plus you're not wasting time in the car uh, often too. But it's just that it's that balance of how we do things where, um, I mean, I, I would say nobody wants to work at data in an environment where it's 100% remote. I think we, we could um, and we do, and or I should say the majority don't because we like interacting with people, mm -hmm. but, um, it allowed us to be ready for moments like this, uh, even though it's still hard. And um, it, I think the biggest thing is that we are still on, we're live, we're responsive for our clients. Yeah. And everybody's rallying around that. Like it's, yeah, it's tough, but who are we doing this for? Who are we available for? We did it for our clients to make sure that um, we can keep our, our value prop strong in even the toughest of, of moments, so. Yeah. Or when a kid's just licking your face or a dog. Or... I have to say, this is well, definitely the, the longest I've ever worked from home. Usually I struggle with one day, but right now I don't have the FOMO going on. Cause... Yeah. Well, and and I, I will say. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, my, my team is uh, full of all introverts. So <laughs> um, you know, this hasn't been as hard on them as maybe some other teams, but even them. You know, being introverted, we're still missing, you know, that direct being in the office and well, you're missing being out. around each other but not talking. Yeah, exactly. Like sitting so. next to someone silently and working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, I know sometimes with working from home that people have concerns about, well, how, you know, you have a lot of distractions, how do you stay focused? And I know like for myself and I think for my team, we're all project managers and being able to be at home and focus in is actually a really good thing. And I know I personally, when I'm working from home, I can get a lot of my to-do list done that maybe in the office, I might be a little bit more distracted. Um, so I haven't noticed any issues with productivity from our team working from home. I think um, I almost feel like maybe we're all a plus students or overachievers, but I feel like everybody is maybe even more productive or more on top of the communication game because they want to make sure everybody knows, hey, I'm here kind of thing. So that's always really great to see too. Yeah, I think it helps that because it's always been part of our DNA to have kind of the flexible work from home, um, we've been able to build systems that let it happen. We don't have like a network drive sitting out there that I have to make sure everybody can connect to. Everything's in the cloud. Um, we've yeah. seen that, you know, there's no pieces of paper getting around past desk to desk or anything awful like that. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, just hearing about nightmares with VPN networks crashing, um, you know, it just wasn't an issue for us, which is super helpful. And, 
I, one other thing I wanted to add about this topic is I think our clients put a lot of trust in us and that is because I think we trust um, each other a lot too. <clears throat> so often one of the things you hear about working from home is, well, how do you know they're actually getting the job done? Well, with our structure, there's, I don't wanna make it sound negative, but there's nowhere really to hide. Like if you weren't doing your job your team members would know with our pod structure because we've got these internal teams and um, it, it's it's a thing that we're, it's not so much there's nowhere to hide, it's just there's nobody wants to let anybody else down, right? That was, no. that was the way I'm, I'm looking to describe that. <laughs> but, uh, and it's great too, because I'm even just looking at like the, the trust that we've built with our employees and I'm seeing a bunch of chats coming in from past employees. Um, which is awesome too. So that trust goes beyond even current employees. It's network um, that we've built up together. Um, so like, like I said, there's a bunch of past employees commenting here today, which is awesome. Um, and I'll say a note about managing a team remotely. So I manage our six project managers and then we have content specialists who are always remote. They don't usually come into the office to work. Um, so it's helped that I had a little bit of experience working with our part-timers remotely. Um, but what is really important, I think, as a manager is to really have those intentional connections with each person on your team and just slacking them and being like, hey, how's it going today? Most of the time I'm in meetings every day with, uh, with almost everyone on my team, but I make a point to reach out to everybody and say, hey, how's it going today? Or uh how is your workload or how are you feeling and i really make a point too especially in this situation to make sure they're taking time for themselves and make sure that they are taking care of themselves and i've been actively encouraging them all like hey if you got to get out and go take a walk because you're st sick of being stuck in your house uh do that so i think that there's a lot of intentional communication that just needs to be done more to keep that uh connection with your your team members I think that's a good point. But also, can this be hard? When home is work, it's hard to trim it off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like, I'm going to call out Seth, one of our account developers who is working from home and still wears a tie every day. <laughs> Don't worry, the clients are calling him out too. I know. And so I teased him about that yesterday. And he's like, you know what, though? I like at the end of the day, I take off my tie and I know I'm done for the day. And I could appreciate that. <laughs> But he should have a video conference with Seth. He's going to have his tie on. Oh my credit. God, that's why Jason's been wearing a hat. He tried. He tried a t-shirt for like the first day or so, and it just wasn't right. It wasn't right. Didn't but no, just I, kept emailing in short language. Like. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that, though. I mean, uh, something we started in the office, you know, recently before we were all working from home was, you know, hat day Fridays where everyone, <laughs> you know, wanted to wear a hat, would wear a hat. Um, obviously at home, it can more turn into like every day is hat day Friday, but last Friday we all, you know, made it a point. I wasn't wearing one and I got called out on it. <laughs> so, put one on. so, but I think just keeping, you know, the things like that, that, that you do when you are working in, a, you know, an office setting or together, keeping those kind of traditions alive, I think is super helpful. Even when everyone's apart, just to bring everyone back together and, Mm -hmm. continue that that team bonding aspect so good point yeah mm -hmm. what are we seeing i mean obviously the marketing world has kind of been shuffled and <laughs> everyone <laughs> tossed the game pieces up and we're in a brand new world but all of my uh, powerpoint slides on the employment crisis suddenly need a lot of updating mm -hmm. um what are we seeing jason especially on social and advertising in terms of what's working and what are people pivoting to. Um, I've seen a lot of good posts. I've seen some bad. Yeah, I mean, across the board, the thing to, the main point there is that obviously if more people are home, they're spending more time on Facebook. And I even talked with our, our Facebook rep earlier and that was one of the main points that she made too is that traffic is up across the platform so i think it's it's using that to your advantage um you know obviously depending on the industry or, or where you're 
where you're in and where your business is at. If, if you have to shut down, or if you're still open, situations are going to be completely different, but going completely dark uh, probably isn't going to be your best you know, option that you want to take. Uh, taking advantage of the increased traffic, you know, cost CPMs are, are going to go down because there's more placement opportunities if you're running ads. Um, you're more than likely going to have to adapt and, and switch the messaging that you're using. Um, yeah. And we've done that, you know, across the board with a lot of different clients that, that we work with. But, um, you know, and, and even if you, you know, you decrease the spend, maybe you're spending up here and you want to bring it down a little bit. I think just having some kind of a presence is important. Um, and then just figuring out what that right message is for your business at this time uh, is, is kind of the, the second most important part of what you're promoting there. I don't know, Kara, you've seen with some of your clients an increase in, in traffic on Facebook, and I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the biggest thing we've been talking about is that research phase is really becoming much more important if you're thinking about the sales funnel when people are really, they have time now to do more of that research where they can go and look at articles for background information. They want to learn more about products, looking at reviews, that sort of thing. So I really think it's important for uh, businesses to think about what sort of information can I be offering people who are um, doing that research and looking more into what my business has to offer them. I think that um, you're just going to see people doing more of that, that maybe that they aren't ready to convert right away because of uncertainty, but you're going to start filling your funnel. And once things kind of stable out, they're going to be ready to go kind of thing. The other thing I'm kind of seeing is, I think maybe Laura mentioned this, that it's really kind of a moment, correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of a moment of truth in terms of employer brand. We're really yeah. seeing who definitely cares. Yeah. Um, Lots of opportunities there mm -hmm. to really show, you know, if you're a business, we're seeing some um, businesses that uh, are really busy right now that are, you know, seeing an uh, uptick in business. And I think it's great for them to sort of share the love as far as we've had clients that have made sure to go to restaurants and buy meals for their entire team. And then they post about it on Facebook. Um, which is a great message to send how you're supporting the community, understanding that, you know, things might be really great for you, but there are other um, businesses that are struggling, you know, restaurants for sure have taken a hit. Um, and also about how are you supporting your team members right now is a great message too. If you are supporting them working from home, if you are doing things to support, you know, working parents who are now also teachers, uh, <laughs> There are lots of different opportunities to get that message across and share that story and really build up your uh, business brand. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people pivoting to the child entertainment field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mary Bruno's reading things. Uh, yes. St. Cloud Floral and Art As You Like It are getting take home kits. Yeah, that market's real right yeah. now. I never, I never thought this is how homeschooling would get popular. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm taking it in another direction, but you know, one of the coolest things I saw is like Pantown here in town um, had to shut down the brewery, but they started offering beer delivery. Mm -hmm. um, and I see a note here that actually ran out of growlers. Yeah, you, you can only order um, if you have your own growler. So, you know, that's pretty cool. I, you know, you just have to pivot and change and do things differently, but you know, continuing to interact and engage and, and share your brand. Uh, it just mm -hmm. shows the power of that because they have such a strong brand and obviously people really like them. They're still going to you know, purchase beer and have it delivered. It's just a little bit different scenario, but. Yeah, no, I think that you see that more and more where um, I kind of wonder if there's like the, the nine 11 after effects, like yeah. that people want to support local businesses. Like we have all lived through the great recession and, um, obviously no one wants that again. So I think that you see a lot of people who are like, okay, I need to support local business. I know my husband does the meal planning in our house and once a week he's like, okay, let's pick a local restaurant that we can order food from. And just that's part of our yeah. meal planning for the week. Um, so I think that that's really heartwarming to see. 
that people are trying to do that more and more. Yeah, no, I've, I've thought that in terms of, you know, during this time period, I'm not going to go spend money at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to boat it or someone local. The other thing yeah. I've seen is a lot of those places are pivoting their takeout options too, to be more of a family meal, less of an individual entree side type deal, which I think is Yeah, really that's really smart too, to do like the takeaway meals or like here's for a family of four. Uh, I loaded yeah. up on Bravo meats, beans and rice. <laughs> and they threw in chips, it was great. Yeah, that's smart. <clears throat> well, I think it too, like even with um, just, we're talking about the food side of it, but even on the, the more, um, I guess, the, the business to business side, it could be personal side too, of course. But um, with taxes, like normally I prefer meeting with our accountant, a planner winner, and doing it in person, getting a quick explanation. But they were very prepared to have everything available online. And it went super smooth, besides the mistake that I made, but we fixed that. Um, or working on that, uh, thanks to Chantel, because she caught it. But um, you know, just life goes on type of thing. And I think you, when the businesses that are doing it right are the ones that are blending or adapting, like we've mentioned, and being nimble. Like I've even gone into uh, convenience stores where they actually put up like ply wall and plastic and like made like a little like like you open the door and then there's a six by six foot little waiting box and then the guy goes and grabs whatever you want or the, the, yeah. the woman whoever's working and brings it to you oh, so wow. that's yeah. really another innovative way to do it it's kind of like a, a walk-in drive-through so mm -hmm. to speak so um yeah there's ways to do this and to to continue life um it's definitely more difficult but um i love the whole scrappiness of the american small businesses and um, that's why we're in this too, is that we, we do band together and in moments like 9-11, Carrie, I think it's a great example where we're trying to help each other out on a business side. And then even in the neighborhood, like we recently had like a neighborhood get together where we all sat in lawn chairs about like 12 feet apart. <laughs> it was kind of funny to see that, but, um, you know, you, you can, yeah. life goes on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the other part of it, I think what we're seeing sure some things are less convenient but some things are getting more convenient from a consumer perspective and i think that's the behavior we're not going to see change back at the end of this so it's there's an interesting room for innovation here mm -hmm. um and that innovation isn't going to disappear and it's definitely going to be led at the small business level mm -hmm. it's going to become an expectation like oh that yeah. was really convenient that i could do that i always want to do it that way Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, our, very oh. own, our very own Brian Myers ordered groceries online for the first time and he's oh. like Holy they, world. Just, they yeah. just loaded them in my back of the car and in the trunk. I didn't even have to get out and it was beautiful. I'm like yes. there. Even, even I have not tried that yet. So he's more yeah. Ah. yeah, I have more at the times than I am, I guess. But well he's his millennial scale is um yeah, way up there. Going up. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. No, but I, I think that's what we've seen is a lot of people are figuring out, you know, the circumstances are rough, but how can my business pivot and keep serving people and make their life better? And none of us want to lose out on the things we've always enjoyed. We just might have to enjoy them in a different way right now. Okay. So one other point on that, too, is we, during this time, data and on behalf of our clients, our small to medium sized clients we become more of a communications company yeah. than a marketing company right so yeah. we're we're helping out a lot with you know web banners like because the community like when you go into a store how do you interact with people like i think that's what people are looking for like we want to support you can see right there's yeah there's no rules but what are they yeah what are the rules exactly and um just like we're talking internally that communication is more important now than ever over communicating Mm -hmm. Same is true for businesses trying to communicate with their customers or potential customers. It's not so much a marketing message, it's education on how do you interact with us in this new world because um, I didn't read about this, you know, in school. Uh, no. no through an MBA, you know, program and said, okay, here's what happens if there's a global pandemic and how to run your, your company. 
I think uh, my school books might have been evidence that Facebook was mentioned in them, but they definitely uh, had a <laughs> no yeah. pandemic preparation. No. But I think in situations like this, the main point is communication is extremely key. It's mm -hmm. got to be constant, consistent, things like that. Yeah. I and some... I think that, oh, go ahead. Nope. You see, this is the one pain point of conferences. <laughs> you know, there's only one. <laughs> um, but I was going to say also um, communication with your customers and then communication to your team from, yeah. I know from a leadership perspective, we've really uh, have tried to be as transparent as we can with our entire team. And I think being transparent to the fact of, you know, we're kind of in uncharted territory right now and we're going to figure this out together and just being clear on that so people know and are all on the same page is really important too and making sure you're getting that feedback that it's not just top down but you're also getting the feedback from um the bottom up so to speak but um yeah. make sure that it's a two-way street instead of just you know leadership dictating here's what it is you know you might you know open it up to your team and they might have some great ideas of how to make this work with people working from home and how it needs to look as a structure yeah no our most active channeling is Unfortunately, the COVID-19 one, where they've all been sharing the ideas about here's how we can add value, here's something we can help the customer with. Oh, and here, by the way, is a funny Zoom disaster. <laughs> you have that pulled up to share. Uh, you know, it wouldn't let me stream two things at once, but I will just put it in the comments here just for everyone. And maybe that's how we sign off today. Is, uh, remember not to do this with your Zoom ever. Thankfully, we have not had this happen at Data. Don't feel bad if you forgot to to like unmute yourself during a meeting. It could have been worse the other way. <laughs> Just if you find yourself carrying your laptop into the bathroom, don't. <laughs> Yeah. Like just as you're a team manager, that's your, no. That's your general rule: don't just walk away from the, the laptop. It's yeah. fine. You can put it; can stay there. <laughs> There's Actually, options. That was, that's a good point: is that people understand that life's going on. So, a lot of these chats, you can, or a lot of these uh, video conferences, you can just send a chat message and using the restroom or got to even be if right you don't. Back. Right, be right back. Just screaming, screaming at me. Yeah, sorry. Cat attack. I had to go get juice in the middle of our meeting earlier today. I had to get up and go get someone a cup of juice. What happens? It's fine. <laughs> well, how is that different than somebody wanting coffee in the middle of a meeting, right? That's it. It's fine. Everyone's got their own juice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I think this has been a great happy hour, but I'm practically out of beer. Um, oh, man. I think we're going to have to do this next week. Yeah, this is fun. Thank you. Hey, yeah. thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Stay healthy. <laughs> Stay distant. <laughs> Stay distant. <laughs>